When you're a little girl and you want to be an astronaut when you grow up, it's like wanting to be a policeman when you grow up. Or, or in some cases, wanting to be a doctor when you grow up. You're told that's not an appropriate goal for a little girl. Why don't you want to be something else, you know, like be a nurse, don't be a doctor. Or if, if uh, it's not put on you that, um, that this sexist trip, uh, that this is an inappropriate goal for a little girl, what you might hear from a counselor at school is that what you're trying to do is something that uh, is beyond your abilities. Uh, you're shooting too high. Uh, if I could give any advice to anybody, and, and I hate people who give advice, it would be not to let people tell you what you can't be. You have to decide for yourself what it is that you want. And if you want it, really want it badly enough, then you have to make it happen for yourself. So. When the space shuttle was first tested at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center in Southern California, a lot of people didn't know that the director of the shuttle operations was a soft-spoken, highly qualified former Air Force test pilot. Isaac Gillam was born in Washington, D.C. As a kid, he liked math, lots of math. He built model airplanes and dreamed of flying. As far as I'm concerned, uh, what I did is I pursued uh, an interest that, uh, that, that I had a lot of enthusiasm about, uh, flying airplanes, rockets, and space as, as that evolved. And uh, my, my joining NASA was relatively natural because I was interested in these types of things. We are now in the era of the space shuttle, and once again, the world will focus its attention on America's astronauts. How do the astronauts feel about being the center of so much attention? When I talk to people, I tell them that probably for every astronaut, who of course gets all of the publicity, there are probably a thousand support people behind, behind him, behind the scenes that you never see, and those are really the essential people. Real numbers. When the shuttle made it possible for scientists to be a part of the program as astronauts, then uh, that was my break. And I will be involved in payload operations, performing some of the experiments. If there's any extravehicular activity going on, then I will be the one performing that. So it's a, you know, a multiplicity of duties. Let's chat with the people of NASA, people like Dr. Ronald McNair, a physics professor and one of NASA's newest astronauts. You are, uh, you are a PhD from MIT, aren't you? That's right. Um, isn't that kind of, um, that's kind of tough thing to get, isn't it? I have to agree. <laughs> Why is it so tough? Oh, it's, it's a very broad field involving, many times involving the abstract and things which aren't exactly intuitive. They violate our intuition and it violate the world as most people know it. Has athletics had any value to you as an astronaut in your job here at NASA? I say very definitely, especially in the developmental stage. Um, I've always been involved in lots of athletics. Like in high school, I was captain of football, track, and baseball teams. And uh, I'm still involved in each of the sports to some extent. But for the most part now, I'm a karate instructor. And that's where I spend most of my uh, hours in <laughs> physical activity. That's something I've been doing for the last 12 years. And I've become quite involved in it. Now, I think athletics helps develop a great deal of that discipline I was talking about. That uh, ability to do a job even when you don't feel like doing it. Something that you do, something that you have to do and need to do whether you feel like it or not. And I think that's where, that's where I think it helped me a great deal. On the football field, suffering. <laughs> and uh, you have to take that next step and keep going and not giving up. It develops a great deal. Uh, karate has been in addition to keeping in shape, it's been very good for sustaining a discipline and for keeping a calm frame of mind and a positive outlook. <laughs> 